This $7 billion mega project is set to save Venice. How, you may ask? Well, let us tell you. How does a colossal engineering marvel named Mose stand as the barrier between this historic city and the rising tides? What challenges did it face and is it living up to its enormous price tag? Today, we delve into the intricate tale of Mose, the ambitious flood defense system, unveiling the triumphs, tribulations, and future implications for coastal cities. Stick around as we unravel the gripping story of this monumental project and its significance in the face of climate change. Over time, the city, renowned for its canals, bridges, and architectural marvels, has garnered a reputation for flooding. While it has always been susceptible to water, the frequency and severity of floods have escalated in recent years. To address this challenge, the city has invested billions in a unique defense system showcasing remarkable engineering. Its mission, to definitively halt this unwelcome water issue. However, the execution hasn't gone entirely as planned. Exceedingly more costly than initially projected and spanning decades in development, the scheme has encountered obstacles such as corruption, environmental opposition, and doubts about its long-term efficacy. In the context of a changing climate, this narrative is crucial for coastal cities to heed, marking both triumphs and tribulations in our path to shaping the future. Nestled in a lagoon, Venice has grappled with the natural occurrence of aqua alta, or high water, since its establishment in the 5th century. This phenomenon results from a convergence of weather elements, high tide, low atmospheric pressure, and robust winds from the Adriatic Sea, leading to recurrent flooding. While flooding has been a long-standing aspect of life here, it has evolved into an existential challenge. What was once an occasional event happening a few times a year surged to over 60 occurrences annually by the close of the last decade. In 2019, the city experienced its most severe flood in over 50 years, submerging 80% of its expanse. Coupled with escalating sea levels, heightened extreme weather incidents, and the gradual subsiding of the city, albeit at a slow pace, an urgent remedy is imperative. Enter the nearly 6 billion euro or 7 billion dollar flood blockade, now operational after 18 years of construction. Named the Mose system, it comprises of 78 gates, each 20 meters wide, that ascend from the water when anticipating flooding. These emergent barriers are strategically positioned at three locations along the coastal cordon, dividing the lagoon from the Adriatic. Malamocco and Chioggia, the two lower inlets, feature a singular barrier each, while Lido in the north accommodates two barriers, framing a newly constructed artificial island. During periods of inactivity, the gates are water-filled, submerged with substantial reinforced concrete housings, allowing unobstructed passage for boats overhead. Activating them involves injecting compressed air into the gates, expelling water and inducing rotation on their substantial 42-ton hinges, eventually breaching the surface. Emptied of water, they manifest as a formidable barrier, adept at obstructing even the most elevated tidal waters. Capable of withstanding a 3-meter high tide, they are engineered to remain effective even in the event of a 60-centimeter rise in sea levels in the future. After the tide recedes, the gates are promptly refilled, seamlessly flipping back to their closed position. Their ascent takes approximately half an hour, while the descent requires around 15 minutes. The entire system boasts flexibility as each barrier comprises multiple gates, all independently controllable. This adaptability is crucial, adjusting to varying tide sizes and other environmental conditions. The functionality of the gates is indeed ingenious, yet it's the colossal housings known as caissons that stand out from a construction perspective. These mammoth structures, equivalent in size to apartment blocks and weighing several thousand tons each, underwent production at three distinct locations before being lowered into expansive trenches on the seabed. Additionally, each of the four barriers incorporates two shoulder caissons linking the housings to the mainland. They serve as conduits for workers to access the system's internal mechanisms through service galleries beneath each barricade. Notably, diverse methods were employed to launch the caissons into the water, with those constructed on the Chioggia side developed in a dry dock, subsequently filled with water, to render the final structures nearly buoyant. Utilizing barges equipped with substantial cranes, the caissons were skillfully hoisted and navigated to their designated locations. Meanwhile, at Malamocco, 
Colossal rolling platforms mounted on tracks facilitated the seamless movement of these units. Positioned at the water's edge, a crane lifted them before the arrival of barges and tugboats transported them further. Across all three sites, the descent of the Casson saw the implementation of hydraulic dampers at each corner, mitigating the impact force as these substantial structures made contact with the seabed. Even during the deployment of Moser, a pathway for vessels remained accessible. Locks were integrated alongside the barriers, ensuring the continued passage of some boats even when the gates are raised. This innovative flood defense system holds significance for areas like New York City, San Francisco Bay, or Sydney Harbor in the coming years. However, before these cities consider adopting this concept, it is crucial to pose a fundamental question. Does the system in Venice genuinely prove effective? The encouraging news is that the Moses successfully withstood its inaugural significant test. In October 2020, the system effectively shielded the city from a 1.3 meter high tide and has since demonstrated its reliability on multiple occasions. However, it's crucial to note that this success doesn't equate to complete elimination of flooding. In December, the system faced a challenge as it couldn't avert an unexpectedly high tide that inundated the city once again. Importantly, this lapse was not attributed to a flaw in the system, rather meteorologists had underestimated the water's potential height, leading authorities to overlook activating the defense mechanism. It marked just one in a series of setbacks for the project. In 2014, a corruption scandal unfolded leading to the arrest of numerous officials including the city's mayor. Millions of euros in bribes were believed to have exchanged hands in connection with this scheme. The final cost has escalated by approximately 4 billion euros beyond the initial projection, and this doesn't even account for the estimated annual 100 million euros required to uphold the system. Critics express apprehension regarding the potential ecological impact of Moser on the lagoon's delicate systems. The method of restraining the water in this manner raises concerns about diminishing oxygen levels, a problem that intensifies with increased barrier use. As sea levels are projected to rise, the barriers might become a more frequent sight, prompting doubts about their resilience to the higher water levels anticipated later in the century. The Venice Safeguard System could face challenges with a sea level rise of just 30 centimeters, according to its operator. Such an increase, expected by mid-century according to moderate projections, might strain the system. With optimistic emission reduction efforts by major nations, scientists suggest Moser could function as intended for a century. However, more pessimistic scenarios could significantly reduce its lifespan. Despite recent reinforcements, the city of Venice finds itself vulnerable in the long run. Pierpaolo Campostrini, the director of a research consortium studying the Venetian lagoon, remarked on the system's temporary nature, estimating its effectiveness for a period between 50 to 100 years. This acknowledgement doesn't diminish Moses current utility, but underscores its provisional nature. Criticism has also been directed at the extended duration of the project. The project's fundamental concept, crystallized in the 90s during an earlier era of climate science, comes with a drawback. It was envisioned for infrequent use. As sea levels rise, the Moses system may need to operate more regularly, transforming from an occasional solution to a semi-permanent seal. This shift could have consequences, including alterations to the lagoon's environment, disruptions to marine traffic, and increased strain on the system, necessitating regular maintenance. The looming question pondered by operators and scientists alike is the timing of this inevitable tipping point. Presently, the Moser system is deployed sparingly, typically in winter when heightened winds induce storm surges across the Adriatic. Each activation comes at a cost of approximately $300,000, involving dispatched workers to the artificial island and patrol boats securing maritime traffic. However, if the seas experience a mere 30 centimeter rise, the Moser would require activation every three or four days. According to Zorotti, such a frequency would strain the system, impeding maintenance efforts and disrupting maritime activities. When questioned about the sustainability of Moser at a 30 centimeter rise, he responded, the way I see it, no. In a scenario where sea levels rise by 60 centimeters, a plausible outcome by 2100, the Moser would be deployed up to 500 times annually. Bleaker projections for the same period indicate a sea level increase exceeding one meter, leading to the lagoon being effectively closed for a substantial part of the year. 
Skepticism also surrounds its effectiveness compared to older, more economical defences such as London's Thames Barrier or Rotterdam system. Regardless of the skeptic's perspective, the people of Venice are entrusting their future to this system, bringing significant relief. While it may not be a flawless solution, the crucial factor is its current functionality, a compelling case study for other cities grappling with rising sea levels. Do you think other cities may also use the Mosa system going forwards in the future as sea levels continue to rise, and why? Let us know down below in the comment section, and if you found this video intriguing and want to delve deeper into the future of construction, be sure to subscribe to the Uber Build.